Okay, we got some issues with the house. Whoa! It's the flypocalypse. Duct tape will fix anything, even your house. Okay, we got some issues with the house. There's definitely some deterioration going on with these bags. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go over it. Jess is out here with me. Wind's picking up. Oh, I see that? That wind's picking up, isn't it? Oh no. Oh no, what happened? Oh, your, your glasses fell apart. Your sunglasses fell apart. Oh, I'm never gonna find that screw. Oh no, that, that screw is gone. Nope, that screw's gone. It's gone forever. <laughs> it's like whoosh, another dimension. Jess and I are out here. Uh, her sunglasses are now damaged. Terrible. We're gonna show you some of the sun damage that we've already seen on some of these bags. There's a good reason why you want to get these covered up ASAP. Okay, we're going on the inside first. All right, show me what you're seeing. Okay. Oh, yeah, look at that. Right here, so. Just, I mean, kind of some small holes. And that could have been done, like maybe crew coming in here. Well, if you notice the gravel's kind of pushed away. Pushed. So. I noticed he was laying over here and he likes to scratch at the ground and make a little crew nest. So I think he might have nicked the bags with his nails. It doesn't take much. There's a number of small holes right there. If that's the extent of the stuff on the inside, that's not too bad. Now we'll show you the uh, the really bad stuff. So we'll take you up top, and uh, this the damage here is much more extensive. Whoa! These bags on top are just exposed to the sun pretty much all day long, every day. And I think just uh, the friction of us standing on it, walking on it, shifts that plastic a little bit. And once you get that hole in the bag, the wind and the sun will just do its thing and it'll just start unraveling by itself. But the soil is holding together pretty well. Yeah, solid brick up there. Pretty much, except the ends. The middle is really hard. We'll show you how we do the small fixes. These large ones, I, I don't think we can do anything with it to get the bag stabilized, so we might just have to cob over it ASAP. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a quick repair of these tiny holes. Uh, just something to cover the bag and cover that hole until and, we can get some cob on it. And I'll kind of keep it from deteriorating because once you get those strands, they'll just kind of uh, come, uh, come undone by themselves, right? So we want to stop that hole from getting any bigger. Yeah, that should be fine just until we get cob over it. All right, that's all there is to it. Duct tape will fix anything, even your house. Someone gave us some lemon balm and some other plants. I'm planting the lemon balm today. Now if you caught our last video, you know we've put up the eaves on our earth bag dome. This is gonna open us up to so many possibilities, so many advantages of things that we can do with this dome. I'm excited to have those eaves up there, but I wanna make them a little bit more secure. Now let me show you what I've been doing. So I've been using my miter saw and just bits of scrap wood, and I've been making my own little shims. I'm gonna use these, slip these underneath the eaves, and then glue everything down. Cause right now those eaves are just attached by some metal brackets. I mean, they're holding up really well, but it'll give the eaves a little something to rest on so that the metal isn't fully supporting the eaves and it'll get us ready for the next step of the build. So I'm gonna take these, I wanna get them up to the top there and then glue everything in place. Get my glue on. Careful, crew. Uh, it's comfortable, huh? Can't be more comfortable than by the air conditioning. It's a weird one. He wants to be by daddy. He's a daddy's boy.
And that's it. Now, I kind of started this project a while ago. Past couple of days, I finished it up, and it's basically I was just cutting a whole bunch of metal, getting it put up on the roof. The way the roof was done before, I did it without fascia board. And when I did that, the original metal overhang was fine. Now, I wanted to add the fascia board, but then the original metal that I had on the roof wasn't quite long enough. So I added some metal flashing. I wasn't crazy about the metal flashing. I want to get the full effect of the roof when the monsoon rains finally come. And I was able to get some extra roofing material at a really good price. But now I think it'll be perfect when I put those gutters back up. So that'll be next. And we'll be getting ready for those monsoon rains real quick. But what's holding me back now is I got the gutter material, but I still need to get more PVC pipe. And the local Home Depot has been out of that PVC pipe for a while now. So depending on when they get some more pipe in, I might have to make some arrangements. I always have to do some kind of work around. Cross your fingers, y'all. All right, now that I got the roof situation covered, at least for now, next up is dirt. Now we're gonna be adding cob on top of our walls before we start with the bags again. So I'm gonna need more dirt. We got a bunch of dirt over here all ready to go, but I'm gonna get some more ready to go. I'm gonna try and fill up this tarp, and then we'll be adding cob to our wall. But it's a nice time to get some work done. It's early, the temperatures are cool, nice and cloudy too. So that'll provide some cover for a little while. So I'm gonna get what I can done while it's really nice out here. Man, we have got a busy day coming up. As many of you know, our truck died recently. I just checked out a truck yesterday. This was our first option and I was really excited about this. We're talking about a 1998 GMC Sierra 2500. This thing was a beast. Ultimately after the test drive, I noticed a transmission leak, which was a big issue. And then it definitely had a very pronounced oil leak as well. Kind of had to turn it down. It was heartbreaking though. I loved it. So although the GMC was a little bit of a letdown, a little bit of a disappointment, we're gonna go check out another truck. I mean, a truck right now would really come in handy. So we're gonna check out another possibility. Hopefully this next one we look at will be a little bit better. All right, so it's a little later in the day. We decided to come out a little later where it's a little cooler. Uh, I'm gonna get some mix going and then we're gonna get those hallway bags covered to stop that deterioration. Oh, what a That's my Bruce Lee. Everybody was Kung Fu Cabin. That's an issue with these bags. If they're covered up, they could potentially last for, I don't know, hundreds of years maybe. But when they're exposed to the light, they start deteriorating. And we found with some other bags that we kind of did as test bags, they maybe lasted like a few months before they started unraveling and getting brittle. The length of time that it lasts in the light might be different depending on like the time of year, the elevation, your latitude, like just how much light, how intense the sunlight is, how long it's the light is hitting the bags. So that's why we've been trying to do this cob while we're building because it's taking us a while to finish building the house. So we're kind of doing it in process. And I think those Holloway bags kind of got away from us a little bit. We've been distracted with some other things and we've been, we just put those eaves up, we put the loft up and we're really into that. <laughs> I want to try and get this dome done as quickly as possible just to avoid having to do too much cob on the inside, but it's taking a while. The inside doesn't get as much direct sunlight, um, but we're thinking about some ways to protect these bags as well. So if the bags did break down and the earth inside them was exposed, what do you think would happen? I don't think it's an issue. I know some earthen buildings are made just out of earth, like compressed earth blocks, for example. Rammed earth. A lot of times those are stabilized with cement or lime to kind of help protect it from weathering. But I mean, I think it would probably hold up pretty well until you know it gets some hard rain or something and it might start washing away, but it, I don't think it would just crumble apart and 
It's not gonna cause any structural issues. But we don't wanna take chances like that. It's better if the bags are intact, but it's not the end of the world if some of the bags start deteriorating and you get some holes here and there. Thankfully, but the ones by the hallway, they're, they're getting pretty bad. Well, yeah, because I mean, those are literally pounded on just pretty much all day, every day by the sun and then the wind. It's yeah. just completely exposed. And plus we were walking on those too. We were kind of using them as steps to get up there. So it got quite a bit of wear. And mm -hmm. once there's a little nick in it, it's a lot easier for it to start unraveling. All right, yep. all right good morning, y'all. Back out here. Time to finish off this hallway to prevent any more of that sun damage. But it's looking good. We almost got one wall done. We'll hop onto the second wall and knock that out real quick. I just want to show you guys real quick uh, what it's like working with cob or just kind of wet material here in the summer. Be prepared. I hope you didn't just eat. It's a fly apocalypse out here. It's the fly apocalypse. And they love landing on you. Sucking up that sweat. Hey there, buddy. Oh, did you get it? Did you get it? Got pieces of bag coming off and sticking to the glove. I'm a little disappointed. So after we checked out that first truck, we checked out another one. Uh, you know, it, it ran okay, it shifted okay, but you know, you just notice those little things like there's rat droppings underneath the hood. There was no coolant in the reservoir. There might not have been transmission fluid either. Yeah, I'm sure there was some in there, <laughs> but uh, it didn't reach the dipstick, so which I guess isn't good. That probably says something about the truck itself, that it's running that well with maybe signs of it being neglected for who knows how long. It's a 96 Chevy CK 2500. Those trucks last if they're well taken care of. But yeah, just the fact that there were signs of maybe a pack rat having a nest in there shows it was probably sitting unused for a length of time. So we opted against getting that one either, and maybe it's just not the right time. We'll kind of keep looking, maybe uh, just kind of occasionally, but I think if we're gonna put some money into something, we're gonna wanna put some money into something that we know is gonna last maybe more than two, three years. We're still thinking about some options and we have some ideas. We might be talking about that coming up in the next few weeks, possibly something that you guys can get involved with and turn it into an interesting project. Uh, but, you know, we're kind of planning out what we wanna do with that. I, for one, am glad we got that hallway covered up. Uh, it is, those bags were deteriorating and I meant to get to it a while ago but then it didn't get covered, but I feel a lot better now. Next up, I'm probably gonna do, uh, do some bracing on uh, the eaves, and then we'll probably end up doing some cob going in between, uh, it's like a cob layer in between the next set of bags. Uh, the build continues, and this dome is just gonna get higher and higher. We're going all the way, 20 feet up. So don't forget to give this a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything. All right, we'll catch you in the next video, everyone. Bye. We're gonna hunker down with Crew over here. He's tired. He's tired from sleeping all night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for all your help, buddy, copping up the hallway. Uh-oh, sea vultures circling. Do, they, do, do you think they think he's dead? <laughs> he sees that we're dirty. He's gotta make sure that we are uh, get cleaned off. Thank you. Come here. Come here. This way. Over here, bro. <laughs>